Hey gang, welcome back. Okay, so this is uh, going to be a shorter, less intense video. So kick back, relax, so much less terminology than the last one. We just have to talk about one thing. Uh, this is a little cryptic, D-O-U, but this just stands for degrees of unsaturation. Okay, so in the next video and beyond, I'm just going to be doing dedicated videos solving one NMR problem per video, and that's just to, you know, reinforce what I think to be a very effective way of attacking the problems, very methodical, because it's like more so how I organize the information. One of the pieces of information, and I, for me, the first one I look to, to, you know, gain, to identify, is how many degrees of saturation are in the molecule I'm trying to figure out if there are any degrees at all. Okay, so what is a degree of unsaturation? So let's kick this back to all the way to one of our, you know, probably one of our first days, even going to OCHEM, like OCHEM lecture or even just, you know, in our carbon, our carbon beginnings. Okay. So you guys know CnH2n plus 2 is the formula for an alkane, right? Okay. So if I gave you C3H8, you'd tell me no problem. This is propane. That makes sense because there's three hydrogens there, three hydrogens there, two, three, six, eight. That's an alkane, right? Follows the formula. So, uh, three, and that this would be th two times three plus two, that's eight. Okay, so then if I gave you something like this, C3H6, okay? This does not follow the alkane formula. In fact, this is actually going to be CnH2n. Uh, Sorry, it's a funky, uh, it's funky H. All right. So, that's because this follows an alkene formula, okay? So, here's the kicker, right? This could solve our problem, right? If I threw a double bond in right now, there's two hydrogens, three hydrogens, that's five, and now there's just one here, right? So, two, three, six. This double bond you can call a degree of unsaturation. A, 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 a molecule is completely saturated if it has hydrogens everywhere and it follows the alkane formula. So you could say alkanes are com hydrocarbons are completely saturated. Now if you increase like you know introduce this double bond, that's a degree of unsaturation. You've eliminated some hydrogens. Okay? Now riddle me this though. Do you also see how this could also fit our bill of C3H6? Right? If I make a ring, a cyclopropane, or just a cyclostructure, there's two hydrogens, two hydrogens, two hydrogens, two, four, six. So double bonds I'm going to erase this. So we can say, and I'm even just going to say, I'm just going to say pi bonds, because triple bonds count too. Pi bonds are degree of unsaturation, and so are, I'm going to say cyclic, uh, cyclic structures, or, you know, rings. So, what I want to talk about here is because what you'll be given is a spectrum and a molecular formula, it helps to know if there are degrees of unsaturation before you look at your chemical shifts. Okay? So, what I want to go through here is just give, go through some examples to identify, you know, are there degrees of unsaturation, what might they be, and then um, you won't really run into re some really complex examples of NMR until OCHEM 2 probably, or if your teacher really likes NMR, maybe OCHEM 1. I'm going to give you the foolproof formula that ca calculates um, uh, degrees of unsaturation. Okay, so there are really two rules of thumb when you're starting out NMR. What you need to do, I'm actually I'm just going to erase this. You, uh, I'm going to put these in red. Um, what we're going to say is ignore oxygen and halogens, then look to see what formula ah can't spell goes by okay so that not the most profound thing I've ever written but here's what I mean so if I gave you guys C uh, 3 H 7 Cl right now think about this what I mean by ignore oxygens and halogens is if I just ignore the Cl and replace it with a hydrogen right what I mean by ignore of these two just ignore sorry ignore oxygen and I'll even say replace halogens with H. Because what I'll do here is if I'm looking for my degrees of unsaturation, obviously this is the structure I need to work with. 
But if I'm just trying to find out degrees of unsaturation, I'll do this. Then I'll say to myself, oh, that's the formula of an alkane. So my degrees of unsaturation would be zero. Okay? Now let's take another example. What if I did C3H7O? So, oh, sorry. This would actually look like this. Uh, C8. Oh, okay. So now what you do is you completely ignore the oxygen and you'd say, okay, still degrees of unsaturation are zero. And here's what I mean by this. So here, right, let's just say put the chlorine here. Now I know you're thinking, you're probably saying like, Joe, clearly by using that chlorine, it's replacing a bond to hydrogen. Yes, but only that one bond to hydrogen, right? There's still an H here. And really we're just swapping out the H for halogen. And in the same example here, and that's why when we do this formula, we replace the halogen, right, which could be denoted by X. It could be any halogen. Um, that's why we replace it in the formula. Now with oxygen, right, think about this. Yes, I know what you're saying. We replace a bond uh, with H to a bond to OH. But think about it. When we bring in the oxygen, we introduce the oxygen as opposed to just regular propane. By eliminating this, one H, we actually add an O and an H. So we actually never lose an oxygen. Okay? So now, here's a situation where this actually matters, though. And this is kind of, you know, much more involved and kind of a little bit more like, you know, real example of what you're going to run into. Maybe I gave you, this is kind of what we talked about before, something like this, C6H12. Now, you would say to yourself, okay, this is CNH2N. This is an alkene. Or maybe even don't think of that, that mindset. Say to yourself, there's a degree of unsaturation because depending on what the spectrum would look like, right? I could have a straight chain and I could have a double bond here. I could have the double bond here. I could have the double bond here, right? There's a whole bunch of possibilities. However, it could also be a ring. All you know is that there's one degree of unsaturation, okay? So that's what we kind of mean by this. Now, another example, right, if we're going to go along with this, is what if I gave you this type of structure? Okay? So again, let's ignore the oxygen. C4H6. So what I like to do is I like to think, what should, what is the appropriate amount of hydrogens this carbon should have? It should have, it should be C4H10, right? That's the 2N plus 2. So, we can see there's a difference of four hydrogens here, right? And now if you think about it, a ring and a double bond eliminates two hydrogens, right? So if we've eliminated four total, and a degree of unsaturation, if one DOU takes up two hydrogens, then if we are missing four hydrogens, we just have two degrees of unsaturation, okay? So that's, this is an important skill to be able to do, to locate how many degrees you have, because more often than not, it's more than just one. Um, and then the rest depends on what your spectrum looks like, right? Because this, this could be any number of things. This could be, you know, one degree of unsaturation could be a ring. The other one could be a carbonyl, a double bond, right? All you know is that rings and pi bonds, right? Whether it be, they be double, double bonds, double bonds, are one DOU, and if you think about it, because right, that's one pi, one pi bond, and if we have a triple bond, it should be T, two DOUs because that's two pi bonds, right? So you just have to be look out, on the lookout for rings, and you have to be on the lookout for double bonds, whether they be carbon-carbon double bonds or carbon-oxygen carbonyl double bonds, okay? So I wanna point out two more things Oh, and one thing you'll see, and you'll notice this a lot, this is a very common thing. If you see a lot of chemical shifts in the 7, 8 range, PPM range, and you have 4 degrees of unsaturation, you may just have a benzene ring. Because think about this, there's 3 double bonds, 3 pi bonds, and 1 ring. That would add up to 4 degrees of unsaturation. And if you think about it, right, there's one H here, there's one H here, your integration numbers should be one because uh, if you have a group here, you know, our group, 
that replaces your only hydrogen, so it'll be pretty obvious. Okay, I think I talked a little bit more than I expected, but what I want to do is just show, flash up the formula for you guys, because this, this formula, I'm not a huge memorization guy, but this works every time, all the time, without a doubt. So let me just throw this up here. Degrees of unsaturation is equal to, if you double the carbons, you add two, you, uh, oops, you add nitrogens, I'm going to erase this, and that's why I'm saying this, this might help more in OCHEM 2, because you don't really run into a whole lot of nitrogen stuff when you're starting out with NMR. Actually, I'll just explain the formula when I'm done. Okay, so, degrees of unsaturation, double the number of carbons, plus just a regular two, plus the number of nitrogens, minus the number of halogens, minus the number of hydrogens, divided by two. So if you really think about this, this is a lot of the things that, you know, we've been, in this equation, is, has all the logic that we talked about. So, you can memorize this, you can, this is helpful when nitrogen, like, I always freeze whenever I have to do an NMR question with nitrogen, because it's a little kooky, but this works like a charm, otherwise, the, the two things you will need to know starting out are just replace... Replace your halogens with hydrogens. Ignore oxygens. Then, then, see, like I would compare your formula, compare against the, uh, what, with the number of carbons, what you should be at. Whoops, that should be a 2n plus 2. Compare against this, that'll tell you, and then take that number of hydrogens, divide that by two, that'll tell you your degrees of unsaturation. All right, so this will become a lot more apparent in the next video and beyond, because from here on out, gang, and I'm telling you the best way, the best way to get good at NMR is to just practice and practice and practice, and I'll tell you what, it sucks because I'll, be, I'll tell you what, I'm not the, the best at NMR. I'm, I'm really not. But... You just have to do practice after practice after practice problem, and eventually you start seeing a lot of typical patterns, and you just kind of know what to look for. So I'm just, if, it, if it's frustrating at first, that means you're just only going to be getting get, be getting better at it, and I promise you, just stick with it, and you will be a champ at it in no time. So I'll see you in the next couple videos.